Good morning everyone. This is Summer Moon Garden and I'm happy to be back home. We just got back from a Royal Caribbean cruise that we took uh, eight days and we went to Labadee, Haiti, Curacao, and Aruba and it was so much fun. Oh, it was so nice to get away. Um, but now we're back home and have to get back at it. While I was gone, a massive order of roses from Grace Rose Farm arrived. And I was so thankful that my parents are excellent gardeners. I learned a lot from them. Um, so they knew exactly what to do. They, <clears throat> excuse me, they got my big gorilla cart filled up with water and stuck the roses in there. And so my objective this morning is to go ahead and get those planted into the ground. So I've already been to my local nursery um, and I got a bunch of fertilizers that I need to use with the planting the roses. And I figured I'd just go ahead and show you what I've got uh, to use today. Okay, so here's what I picked up today. I got uh, some of the, I actually found it. I couldn't believe, I normally cannot find this stuff but I found the smaller bags of the Biotone uh, starter. So, and of course all they had was these small bags. So what I'm gonna plan to do is just mix it with these other uh, fertilizers I've got, just to kind of help spread it out because I've got well over 60, like 60, 65 roses to plant. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna plan to do, but I got some Biotone starter, Rose Tone. I got Garden Tone just because it was on special for 15 bucks and I figured I'll definitely use it. Um, it's, I'll use it for the roses, but you know, obviously mainly using Rose Tone. And then I got this as well. This stuff is really great. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than the Rose Tone, but they only had one bag of Rose Tone left. So I was like, well, I need more than that. So I ended up getting two bags of the Dr. Earth Rose and Flower fertilizer. So that's all the fertilizers I've got for right now. I'll probably end up having to purchase more, but I think this is a good start for sure. And then I ended up getting some supplies. I got some goat skin uh, leather gloves, some knee pads, which I think are really going to be helpful when planting so many roses. And then I got a new spray nozzle. So that's what I got today to get us started. And here, let me go show you all the different roses I've got soaking in my Gorilla Cart. Here they are, isn't this awesome? They're so huge. Do you see how massive that is? Like, look, look at my finger and then look at this. <laughs> this is so huge. What is this one? Red Traviata. Isn't that amazing? I'm so excited. And then I think this one is another huge one. Let me see here. Yeah, pink Traviata. So those are massive. And then look at this, guys. Look at this. This is all one rose. Look, I can't even, I can't even pick it up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> look at that absolute beast. That's Francis Malon. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm going to go through and pull each one out and I'll show you what is what, uh, but I'm going to need to get my rose gloves on because, and I might just go ahead and, you know what I'll do? I'm going to lay them out and that way they'll be easier to, to show you guys. Um, and then I got to figure out where I'm going to plant these. I've got a lot of space, but I haven't really thought about where each one should go. While I was on vacation, I did go through all the roses I purchased and I made sure to document in my notes what the size requirements were for each one. Like, you know, if they got four feet or six feet or whatever, that way when I do plant them, I can do my best to try to make sure one doesn't overshadow another one. So, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out these black trash bags and just set them on the bags so you can see everything. Okay, here they all are. This is my first uh, delivery from Grace Rose Farm. There should still be some more coming uh, from their exclusive line, but those are not gonna be here until March. So, 
let me show you what we've got here. This one is Crocus Rose. Look at all those roots. Isn't that awesome? Uh, most of the David Austins in this group are a little on the smaller side. And I say that because look at that. <laughs> That's why I say they're on the smaller side. They really aren't that small, but just in comparison to the other roses that I got. Uh, here's another one, the Lady Gardener. It's got some awesome new growth right there. Canes look really, really good. Roots look really, really good. And then this one here is Fran, oh no, this is Princess Charlene of Monaco, de Monaco. Huge, I mean, look at that. Look, the old tag has even like been grown over. I'm gonna try to cut that out. But I mean, look at how massive these roots are. Amazing. And then Francis Meland is definitely the biggest out of all the roses that I received. Absolutely huge. I mean, huge. Incredible. Uh, this one is Apricots and Cream. Very, very big rose as well. Everything looks healthy and has growth points on it. Uh, this one is Sweet Mademoiselle. Looking very nice. This monster is pink. Yeah, pink Traviata. Look at that. Look at all those roots and just like, that is a huge root ball, like unreal. And then this one here is red Traviata. Absolutely huge. That one back there is Boscobel. Lots of healthy roots, beautiful green canes. This one is Classic Woman. Looking very good. I'm excited about this one. I'm excited about all of them, but... Oh, Yves Piaget. This one looks really good too, good size. Lots of roots. Moonlight Romantica. Really healthy rose. And then the last one is Marilyn Monroe. And it's got some a bunch of growth on it and some really nice roots. So that's what I've got. This is what I've got to plant today. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that the rain holds off so I can get as much of this done as possible. Okay, so here's Francis Melon. I had to dig a huge hole for this girl. I actually ended up digging not so deep, but really, really wide because the roots aren't super, super deep. But I did loosen the soil up underneath there. Um, but the main thing was just to dig a really wide spot. So I've got it here next to my little bird house thing here. Um, that's where Generous Gardener is. And uh, Frances is supposed to get really, really tall. So that's why I put her in the center. Hey, hi, baby. So that's where she's going to go. So she should uh, grow nice and tall so we can see those blooms. And I've got her in, um, this is obviously my front rose garden area, which gets a lot of sun. So I thought this would be a great spot for it. So I'm going to cover her up now. Okay, so Francis is all firmed in, nice and neat. Um, I did sprinkle in that uh, Dr. Earth rose fertilizer. 
And what I did is I mixed a bag of the Biotone starter fertilizer into the Rose Tone, not Rose Tone, into the new, uh, Dr. Earth fertilizer. So that way it has a little bit of the um, starter uh, mycorrhizal fungi in with it. And let me show you what I got going on over here. Two holes, which I'm putting, I think I'm gonna put Yves Piaget in one and then maybe red traviata in the other. I'm not sure. Um, I might grab, go grab another one and put something different there, but I'm just kind of winging it right now. Um, but here is Sweet Mademoiselle. This one is pink traviata. This is classic woman and Princess Charlene of Monaco or de Monaco. This is Yves, I have to plant her still. But, um, or he, whatever, I think that was a, named after a man. Um, but you see how I've got him lined up in the front here. And then I've got Francis in the middle right there. So the rose garden should be looking nice and full again like it did a couple of years ago uh, when all the David Austins were here and were doing great. But, um, Again, I've, you know, for some reason, for me, um, most, not all, but most David Austins will do great for the first year or two, and then they fizzle out. I don't know why. Um, and that's why this whole side of this, um, whole side of this bed is empty compared to the other one, because I'd put all my David Austins pretty much on this side. And so I'm kind of having to start over, over here. Um... So yeah, so that's the progress so far. I've got to hurry it up because I have to go get my son from school. So I better get this done quick. Okay, I had to come to a stopping point because I've got to go get my son from school. But what I ended up doing is planting red traviata here, Marilyn Monroe here, and apricots and cream there. I thought that would be a nice look together. Um, and that way I've got at least one rose, red rose in this bed. Um, I don't really have like a designated area for red roses and I don't really like, um, I'm not like a huge red rose fan, but I have become a little bit more, um, apt to growing them just cause they are beautiful. And so I don't really have like a space set aside for them. So I just have to like throw them in where I think they may work well. And so i According to the directions online, the Traviata roses stay on the shorter side. So that's why I have them up front. And apricots and cream is supposed to get like five to six feet tall. So that's why I have it a little further back. So that's what's got uh, what's going on so far. Uh, when I get back, I'm going to tackle the other side of this bed and try to get the rest of these roses planted. Okay, so here's what I ended up doing. I um, went ahead and planted Moonlight Romantica up front. And then in order to keep track of my David Austin roses a little bit better, I put them in this bed right here, which I think will allow me to like keep a better eye on them because they're close to the pool area. And when I come out here, I'll be able to like check on them easily because... I always usually have issues with David Austin roses, so I think if, you know, we just keep them here, they'll have better luck of doing well, I hope. But here's what I planted right up front, the Lady Gardener, which I just love this rose. It is so, so pretty. Um, so I think it'll be a really nice rose to have right up front here um, when you're walking down from the pool and it'll probably look really nice with the uh, Bliss Parfuma here because it's kind of in the same color scheme there. Um, this one is Crocus Rose. The tag is a little beat up looking, but um, it's a very, very pretty rose. It's more like a light yellow. How, what's their description? Not really not really beautiful. That's great. Thank you. So many details there. <laughs> um, but it's like a, like a creamy yellow, I would think. Um, it's been a while since I grew that because I tried growing it in a pot and it died like the first year. 
Uh, same with the lady gardener. But I was like, okay, I'm going to try it from Grace Rose Farm. I'm going to give it a shot again. And if they don't do well, then guess what? I can put something new in here. Um, but that right there is an Eden. It's, look at how much it's grown out. Oh my goodness. Everything is leafing out so quickly. Um, and then I put basketball right here, which is a really pretty rose. One of my favorite colors. Super beautiful. So I've got those up front here. This is a big pile of weeds I'm going to have to clean out. Um, so yeah, so I've got all the roses planted now that arrived while I was on vacation. And look what's blooming. This thing decided to start blooming while I was gone. Isn't that pretty? This is our one last remaining peach tree. So, so pretty. I was kind of wanting to remove it. So when you looked down this long walkway here, you wouldn't have a tree blocking your view of the roses. Um, so I don't know, we'll see how it does this year. And it might be its last year in the ground if I'm really motivated to have the uh, rose garden look the way I really want it to. Scott really wanted to keep it here. Um, it is a, it's a type of peach that doesn't need a second tree for pollination. So we should get peaches. Um, I just, I probably need to throw some fertilizer on it. So, and, but honestly, putting all this new dirt around the base definitely helped with that too. Um, but anyway, this is it. I am done. I went ahead and fertilized all of these because when I planted them, I didn't, I don't think I fertilized them. Well, if I did, they got another dose. <laughs> so, uh, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt them because it's the orga organic stuff. So. Um, anyway, I am done for the day. That was a lot of roses. That was, I didn't even count. I'm going to have to go back and count <laughs> to see how many roses that was. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. And when the next round of roses arrives, I will surely, uh, give you an update on those. Oh, and I forgot to show you over here. I planted Yves Piaget over here. I kind of wanted her to have a front row spot because I'm really excited to see the blooms on this one. So Yves is right there and Classic Woman is up front. So I figured I'd spread them out a bit, um, but there's a lot more coming to fill in this whole area here and this whole area here. There's so much coming. Um, still a lot of work to do though. But it's nice to enjoy these little peach blossoms for the time being. Oh, so pretty. Okay, but I, uh, I'm gonna have to go in and I gotta get my daughter ready for volleyball. So hope you guys are doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.